Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. All right, Tuesday, song day. <clears throat> my Peter, Paul, and Mary lexicon, one of their sad love songs. I shall tell of a hunter whose life was undone by the cruel hand of fate at the setting of the sun. His arrow was loosed and it flew through the dark and his true love was slain as the shaft found its mark. She's her apron wrapped about her and he took her for a swan. And oh, and the last it was she, Polly Bun. Technical difficulties. He ran up beside her and saw it was she. He turned his head away, for he could not bear to see. He lifted her up, and he found she was dead. In the fountain of tears for his true love he shed. She had her apron wrapped about her, and he took her for a swan. And oh, and alas, it was she, Polly Vaughn. Oh man, killing your own lover. What a sad way to start the day. But we probably kill our love within ourselves and other people in a lot of other ways we don't even recognize. Maybe not so gross as accidentally sending an arrow through the air. All right, I'm dedicated to the voice that speaks on behalf of something that can't be put into words. It must be lived and not just talked about, not just experienced in seminars, but things that you do in your daily life. In other words, you've got to actualize this behavior. So that means you've got to take time to understand this in yourself. And the first thing I always say to people is do what you love and become aware of it while you're doing it. That's how you find out what you're a vibrational match for. Because what you think and feel, you're going to get a vibrational match in the material world. That's a, not a representation, but a direct manifestation of that. Hard to understand that nothing comes to you except what your vibrations allow. I know it's just hard to try to make sense of this when you see why would people allow negative, violent, horrible vibrations in their life. That's another philosophical question. Right now, I would just suggest think about what you want to, what you want in your life. Learn how to feel good about that and do that as much as you can. That's the overview. You got to accept that your word is silent, invisible, and yet real. That's the power of mental, positive mental attitude. It's the blueprint for the best of everything. Just like you build a house, it's not unreal to draw up the plans to give you the vision of the future. Because you're going to see that what you feel is true is resurrected as your own experience. So I can't tell anybody else how to internalize joy or how to rest in the foreseeing of the accomplishment of your desires ahead to give you enthusiasm and motivate you. I just know that do this in what I call moments of calm reverie, where you can sense that everything is coming into fuller fruition from this moment forward. That is the mindset. Now, one of the problems we have is that uh, if you had any kind of solicitousness from your parents when you were younger, it creates the absolute ineradicable conviction, which no amount of rational thought or empirical science can deny, that the child thinks that the world is there to serve him. So it brings the world to heal with every nod and shriek. Uh, it has creative power. It has authority to command. And that's exactly what has to be, to some extent, not broken, but fostered and encouraged so they're not so narcissistic and self-centered to serve the community. And that's where initiation comes in. 
And in initiation, you know, things are out of control. You don't know where you're going. Because if you knew where you're going, you'd be commuting. And the beauty of initiation is you meet your mentor. And your mentor creates a field of visibility to help you see not only the beauty, but the pain of your struggle as well. The mentor validates, recognizes, and blesses, blesses you as having equal fervor to them. They just don't confirm the sense of your false self. And so this is why, because of socialization, aspects of the ego have to be both developed and suppressed. And that's called diksha in yoga. So I hope you find yours. Tomorrow's on a good vibrations class, yoga for the chicken soup for the yoga soul. Go to gabrielhalpern.com and sign up and uh, let me know how we're doing. I said that this week we would, we would try to expand our uh, understanding of what we're doing to include questions on creativity. Okay. So who do you project creativity on? That would be another journaling question for you. Right? Are you letting someone else carry the burden for you? Whose attributes, qualities of personality, or lifestyle accomplishments represent something that you would like to emulate but in your own way? If you want to discuss that with me, let me know. I'd love to hear it. If not, write it down in journal and enjoy.